praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Um, let us spend some time with today's readings and uh, hopefully a little bit uh, of time with our progressive reading uh, of Pope Francis's collected homilies meeting Jesus in the sacraments. The reason uh, I'm mentioning the Gospel first because when we read the Gospel passage uh, in the Ignatian spirituality we are asked to reflect on our, on our feelings of the Gospel, how we experienced it. And when I read this passage, uh, just uh, the thought uh, uh, occurred that how could we experience the full weight of Jesus' warning to his audience that they will, be, they will be excluded from the kingdom of God if they are not cautious. For the Jews uh, at the time, it must have uh, uh, been very uh, offensive to hear that they as children of Abraham, they will be excluded from the kingdom of God and instead of them, the pagans will go in. And uh, the image I'd like to share with us is that um, in order to, to cut this teaching through us, to take our mission seriously, um, I was just thinking suddenly that uh, how would it feel um, if, uh, if today's Gospel was rephrased a bit and saying that, that you Christians, you baptized, uh, you will be excluded from the Kingdom of God if you behave in the same way like the audience of the Gospel at the time. And uh, you will see that uh, you won't be there, but all the animals, wild animals, which are in our parks, in our garden, uh, in our houses, uh, if they are pets, all the animals will be there. Uh, squirrels, dogs, dolphins, uh, uh, the crows, the blackbirds, uh, uh, the kingfisher, and all the animals which we see, which we simply ignore, uh, because uh, somehow unconsciously we think that we are uh, superior to them. And uh, obviously, if Jesus would phrase the Gospel this way, gave us this warning, we would feel uh, embarrassed even by the thought. But let us take our mission seriously and in a positive way that we really have to work on uh, if we want to be in the Kingdom of God. And we must make an effort uh, to be more generous, uh, particularly in these times when we instinctively, instinctively are uh, self-preserving. To this I'd like to add, uh, to closing, uh, Um, I'm afraid if uh, the, the, the telephone, uh, the Zoom must be totally switched off because it will cause a reverberation if, uh, because it seems that Stella is uh, joining us. Sorry. that interference. So, uh, in chapter 31, the Pope uh, says, the baptized and the new evangelization, in virtue of their baptism, all members of the people of God have become missionary disciples, all the baptized, whatever their position in the church or their level of instruction in the faith are agents of evangelization, and it would be insufficient to envisage a plan of evangelization 
to be carried out by professionals, while the rest of the faithful would simply be passive recipients. The new evangelization calls for personal involvement on the part of each of the baptized. Every Christian is challenged here and now, which I try to illustrate with the Gospel, to be actively engaged in evangelization. Indeed, anyone who has truly experienced God's saving love does not need much time or lengthy training to go out and proclaim that love. Every Christian is a missionary to the extent that he or she has encountered the love of God in Christ Jesus. We no longer say that we are disciples and missionaries, but rather we are always missionary disciples. And being a missionary disciple, um, for me, is that sensitivity that we take the warning of today's Gospel seriously, that we, as baptized, we must be active in order to arrive to the Kingdom, the fullness of the Kingdom of God.